Hello everybody and welcome back to another Sky Factory tutorial. Yes! Sky Factory is a mod pack that I created and uh, if you want to know more about it and how to get it, go back to episode one. Today we're going to complete a new challenge. Let's go check this out. And it is this one right here. Automate a farm with a harvester and planter. This touches into one of my all-time favorite mods. That is Mine Factory Reloaded. Really, really great mod, and this is one of the classic things to do with that. So let's go take a look at our uh, farm that we have over here. We made this ages ago in one of the earlier videos. Just a farm with some magical crops, right? Pretty basic stuff. So we're going to extend this and automate it so that the machines will will harvest the plants for us and replant them so we don't have to touch it and and the stuff is just going to come in how amazing is that no more manually chopping trees or growing food or any of that sort of stuff you can automate it all and uh so as the the challenge says harvester planter those are the two machines that we're going to use and i'm going to spend most of this in creative because again this is a tutorial not a let's play but i have done this live in survival and in hardcore before, so it's absolutely all survival stuff. Uh, so let's look up the recipes. Harvester, pretty easy to craft. You need a golden ax, two shears, and a factory machine block, and some plastic sheets. So the factory machine block is some plastic sheets and just some smooth stone. Take cobble, cook it up, and you're good to go there. And what about the plastic sheets? The plastic sheets are made with four of these raw plastic. How do you make raw plastic? Raw plastic is by cooking rubber bars. How do you get rubber bars? Rubber bars are a drop from rubber trees. And if you've been sifting dirt, let's look this up, rubber. If you've been sifting dirt, then you probably have gotten one of these. If not, keep sifting dirt until you get that rubber tree seed. So it's just a seed. You can plant it on dirt, get a rubber tree. And when you chop down the rubber tree, it will drop raw rubber. So you put that in a furnace to get a rubber bar, cook the rubber bar to get the plastic, uh, craft the plastic, the, the plastic sheets. All right. Makes sense. So again, let's go back to the harvester. So it's not too hard to make. Uh, and then uh, also the planter. Let's look at that. Planter. Similar recipe. Plastic sheets, factory machine block. And don't forget, the factory machine block, you get three of them. So you only have to craft this once to get both of the harvester and the planter. Uh, two flower pots, a piston, and plastic sheets. So pretty easy you should be able to get all this stuff uh we long ago learned how to get clay so you should be able to get flower pots no problem um okay so let's back into creative here so here's the harvester and you're going to want to put it right on the edge of your farm like that so it's standing one block above where the dirt is and uh the little that the that stuff right there which you'll see when i add power to it uh it'll move that's like the the whirring machines that's cutting down the the plants basically and this hole on the back is where the seeds and that sort of stuff will the result of the harvest basically will be kicked out the back um so we need to add power to this we showed you wireless power in the last episode you don't have to do it wireless you could run a power cable over to wherever your farm is or whatever but uh just as a good excuse to use one i'm going to use a dimensional transceiver for this you can power it from any side uh so from from any of the sides of this thing is just fine i'm going to put this one below it and uh we're gonna connect that to auto power and we're gonna receive so that'll fill up with the power and now the harvester it worked look see all this it, it harvested this three by three square and it kicked out the stuff out the back. I don't know if you noticed that, but there we go. Essence dust and essence seed all because this thing harvested it did, did, did. So let's take a look at the interface here of the harvester. If you right click on it, that's power that that tells you that it's working because we've added power to it and you have a work and an idle. So basically 
this works across almost all of the Mine Factory Reloaded machines. There's this work thing, and whatever job that this particular machine has to do, sometimes uh, takes a while per operation. The harvester's pretty quick. Some of the other MFR machines take a longer. So you can like watch this this bar go up as like a visual indication of it cycling through doing its job over and over, right? So that's what that's about. And of course, it's idle. It's idle when it's not working. So, you know, it's going to be doing one of those two things. So this can kind of give you an idea of how fast it's checking the various squares uh, for the presence of a plant. Now, notice it only did a three by three. So without an upgrade, it only farms that area, pretty small. But our farm here is a bit larger, so we need to upgrade that to make that happen. Now, normally, it can be confusing if this is all you have, if you just have the harvester and you start putting in upgrades. Because if you look at, the, if you mouse over this upgrade, by the way, to find it, just search for upgrade, upgrade. We'll get you all these. So these ones that look like this are what we're talking about. There's a bunch of them out of various materials and each one says radius increase. And there's a number there. So basically which material you make it out of will determine how big of an increase you get to your farm. Uh, and the highest in this mod pack is the emerald, which gives you a radius of 11. But how big exactly is that? And that always seems to be confusing. The tool for this is this, the precision sledgehammer. This is not to be confused with the hammer from Ex Nihilo. This is its own thing provided by MFR. Uh, hammer, this guy right here. Look up the recipe. So it's two sticks and three plastic sheets. Real easy to make. If you're holding this hammer in your hand, it's going to give you a colored square that shows you the effective range of the harvester. And we haven't gotten to the planter yet, but it works exactly the same for the planter. So that's really nifty. It, I didn't know about this for the longest time, and I freaked out when someone finally told me about this. I'm like, are you kidding? That's amazing. I was get, get, kept counting and getting it wrong and all this sort of stuff. So now let's put, ah, I, I keep forgetting. You can right click with the hammer to turn it, but we don't want to turn it. I just want to open it up and put, a, put an upgrade in it. There we go. So that's a max size upgrade because emeralds aren't too hard to find in this mod pack. I should mention this stuff too. Uh, small shrooms equals no means you can actually use this to harvest uh, giant mushrooms and sheer leaves yes or no. Uh, if you're harvesting trees, you can have this cut down the leaf blocks. If that's what you're after, if you just want a bunch of leaf blocks, you can use that. Uh, but, you know, careful though, because you're not going to get saplings that way. So if you want saplings, you're going to want to leave that off. And the other thing about this interface that I haven't mentioned yet is the sludge. This is a byproduct of harvesting. It's this, just this, it's a liquid that looks kind of gross. It's like a black color. And there's a thing called a sludge boiler outside of the scope of this tutorial. It's just another, go learn about my factory reloaded if you want to know more about that. But maybe you want to harvest this and collect it for later, in which case you could put there's some things you could put on here to collect the sludge. For now, though, for the purposes of this tutorial, don't worry about it. Ignore the sludge. This will fill up. It'll get all the way full. And a lot of people seem to think that if the sludge is full, that your harvester will stop harvesting. This is false. It won't start ha stop harvesting. It doesn't affect it at all. Let it fill up with sludge. Nothing happens at all. It's just full. The only downside is that you're not collecting the sludge if you're planning on using it later. That's it. So otherwise, just ignore it. Okay, so we put this upgrade in here. Now let's get our hammer again. Now look at this. Okay, are, are you catching the vision of the magnitude of this thing? This is the size of the maximum farm. <laughs> yeah. So big, I'm coughing on my <laughs> myself. All right, uh, I'm gonna take advantage of the fact that I'm in <coughs> creative here, and I'm gonna just go ahead and use my builder's wand and stuff and make this uh, quickly. Uh, so, you know, this might not be the best well thought out and designed uh, uh, 
shape for a farm or whatever. I'm sure you guys are going to come up with some very creative designs for your farms. Uh, a lot of people will layer these on top of each other, you know, go vertically with them so you can have a, a different crop on each layer. Uh, there's a lot of ways to do it. But you're going to want more farms if, um, if your goal is to complete challenges. Uh, okay, so let's get rid of that egg and put some dirt there oh is it not gonna here let's here let's do this it doesn't want a builder's wand because it's tilled land which i don't technically have in my inventory there we go there we go okay now we can now we can do this uh sledgehammer got what four more blocks to go basically here okay Boom. All right. Is that it? Yes. Okay. We've matched it up that way. All right. Now let's go this way. Quite a bit. <laughs> oh my gosh. This thing is huge. Uh, more. We need more. Uh, and that's it. Boom. Okay. We've matched up on that side. Monsters are going to spawn here any moment. Uh, that's interesting. I didn't know you had to be above it to see it. If you get below it, you don't see it anymore. There we go. Looks like two more. Done. Okay. All right. We're good on this side. Oh, there's a monster. Nice. Okay. We're done. And we can get rid of this thing now too. Now the, another interesting thing to note here is that you don't need, you don't technically need light and you don't need water. The harvester and the planter takes care of all that for you. It will auto till and it and it keeps the, the stuff hydrated and all of that. You don't have to put water in here. Uh, there are advantages to that and I'll show you a little bit about that in, in a minute. But for now, let's just get this going. Okay, so it's powered and we've got the upgrade. This should all be covered. Now we need a planter. So what we want to do is find the middle of this, and I think I got it first try. Um, let's go down here. Planter. Boom. Planter goes right there. Uh, and now we can't see. Let's get up above here. Okay. There's the planter. We want to put the same upgrade in here. So let's talk about this interface. So when we get power to it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to work the same way. It's going to have the power bar, the work bar, the idle. That's all the same. This area is where you put the seeds that it's going to plant. So you need to come up with a way to insert seeds into the, or yeah, of, of whatever, sapling seeds, whatever, depending on what you're growing. You need to put that stuff here. And then you have this filter. The filter allows you to set up... Um, areas so like right, this is pretty big right you might not need a farm this big for one thing well the planter would allow you to grow one crop in one corner and a different crop in the in the other locations that's what it's for so you can uh right so i can put essence seeds here and the planter would take them and uh start planting them or i could take uh or i should say and I could put that, if I put essence seed there, then that means that just that corner of the thing is going to have essence plants and, uh, you know, we get another, like, sapling. Let's say we wanted to grow a couple of kinds of trees. We could do forest trees over here and then birch for everything else. As an example, you know, you, you get the idea. Uh, but you don't have to put anything in there. You can just leave it blank. If your whole farm is going to be one crop, you can just leave it blank. And that'll do it. All right, so let's get power. Boom. And receive lava power. Plop. There we go. And this is now powered. And uh, we'll cover that in. And this actually gets covered also. Uh, but before we cover it up, let's put some seeds in here. So there's a stack of essence seeds. Look at it go. There it goes. Boom. It just tore right through that. And check it out. It planted them all. So that's an entire stack of essence seeds. And once they are fully grown, 
then uh, this harvester will plant them. And you can see that it automatically, uh, it automatically tilled the land and planted them. I'm sorry that it's nighttime. I don't have the, uh, hold on, this is bugging me. Let's, utility mode, where's the daylight thing here? Right there. Let's give ourselves the ability to make it day. There we go, sorry about all the darkness. <laughs> But yeah, but so that that's working. Now the problem is we haven't automated uh, collecting the drops or reinserting the seeds. So that's the final step. But this is technically working now. Obviously, you need to worry about monsters. Uh, tilled grass like this won't spawn monsters. But you can see there's you know there's no water in here so it starts to decay it once it's fully operational and you have an excess of seeds and all that it won't be a problem cuz you're always going to have plants and you don't have to worry about the monsters but before you get to that point you're going to have spots like this where it dries out and mobs can spawn there so either my recommendation is either do a similar thing to what i did uh before where like you have a block here one one space above and put torches around it and you can do that across the whole thing to keep it lit uh or you know you could just yolo it and put a fence here to cut off the mob so they can't come at you or something like well you know spiders will still jump on your face but you get the idea um okay so let's talk about automating this stuff we need a way to get those the the essence and stuff back into our storage system and we also need to return seeds to the planter. So let me show you an item I've got on my bar here called an ender chest. You may remember the ender tank that we're using to move lava from the nether to our power system. Well, this is very similar, but it's a chest. Uh, and this is a, a big step up from the vanilla ender chests. It's got a lot more features. The basic concept is the same. The, the two are linked, so if I put one here, an item, wait, why did that disappear? Oh, that's right, I've already got an import, I forgot. <gasps> Lol, it's connected to my, uh, to my AE system. Anyway, two chests are gonna be linked together with their inventory, so anything you put in there is gonna be in all of them. And so what I'm doing, and I'll show you the recipe in a second, you can see I've got one set up here. That's what I forgot that I had already done. We've got our storage system here, right? And I have this thing set up to automatically import anything that gets into this chest is gonna get sucked into our storage system automatically using these precision import buses. There's an import bus and a precision import bus. The main difference is the precision import bus can filter out. If you only want it to import one thing, you can do that. Uh, and the other major difference is this one, stack mode versus single item. The basic import bus only imports one item at a time, and you can't filter it. The precision lets you filter it if you want, and move stacks at a time. So I've got this ender chest, and this is intended to be the main thing. Like, all our farms, quarries, all sorts of whatever things we do, all the stuff that we do that we want to import into ME is all going to use this basic uh, ender chest here. So that's why I've attached several of these. You only need one, but if you've got a bunch of stuff going on, for example, epic amounts of cobblestone from cobblestone generators, it would fill this thing up too fast. Uh, at that point, you you have a chance. You 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 can definitely get to the point where you're putting items in faster than you're taking them out. And the solution to that is add more import buses. So because there's four import buses connected to this, it can import four stacks at a time. And uh, if that and and I have uh, exceeded that, if you get past that and you still need more faster, just set a second one up. Just make another another ender chest and add more import buses to it. Just make sure they're all on the same channel. Same channel? What does that mean, Bacon? Well, just like the ender tank, you've got these three things on here which you can use to determine, to basically make a separate set of chests. So um, let's get some green dye. And of course that comes from cactus and you should already know how to make cactus by now. If not, go back and watch the earlier videos. 
So let's make this a different one. So let's just call this green, right? And so now anything I put into this goes into the AE system, boom. But if we put something in here, it stays. That's because this is technically a separate chest. So that's what the colors are for. You can use any of the Minecraft colors uh, and up to three of them. So you can get all sorts, like hundreds of, of example or different color ones. And in addition, this also supports server play. If you're playing on a server with different people, this little latch right there, right click on that with a diamond and it'll privatize it to you. So you don't have to worry about other people on the server taking your stuff out of the chests. Uh, so yeah, there you go. And so we're going to make that the basic one. So anything that comes out of the harvester is going to go straight into, into AE. Uh, and that makes the harvester portion of this finished. And then we just need a way, uh, to put the seeds back into here. And there's several different ways to accomplish this. Uh, there's a lot of different kinds of item cables and stuff that can move items around. There's more than one way to do it. I'm going to show you what I most often do. And we're going to create a separate channel, a separate chest system, just for what we're doing here. So we, we added a green, green because these are green uh, seeds from the essence seeds, right? Um, and... We're going to use a transfer node. You should be well familiar with these by now. And I'm just going to hook this thing up to that right there. And you can see, look, it's pulling the seeds out. So it's, it's extracting the seeds from that chest automatically, and it put them right into the planter, and they're already gone because the planter is doing work, and it planted them. There you go. And take note of how it's doing this in strips. You see that? It planted them in a strip like this. You can't see it, and I kind of wish the sledgehammer would allow you to see it, but the way that the thing plants and harvests, there's like an invisible cursor that's traveling up and down in rows. It's just kind of going back and forth and checking each square like that. So you, there's no way to see it happening, but that's the way it does it. It does it in these strips. And when it finds, when it travels along and finds an empty square, then the planter is going to plant something there. And the harvester is doing the same thing. It's going row by row, checking if it finds something that needs harvesting, it'll harvest it. That's worth noting because you might see uh, an empty square here and you have the planter going and you're like, why isn't it planting? Why isn't it planting? It's right there. Why isn't it planting? Well, it's probably because it's over here, busy checking this section, and it just hasn't gotten over here yet. And the bigger the area is, it doesn't increase the speed of the check, which means it'll take longer total to check the entire farm the bigger it is, because it's a big area to search, if that makes sense. Okay, so we've got this system. This can automatically import the seeds into here. Now we just need a way to fill, you know, to get the chest, the, the seeds into here. And we're going to do that by going back to our ME system. And we're going to set up another chest right here. And we're going to make it match there. So that's going to be for green. And so this is an import bus, which is going to import into our storage system. We want to export now, export from the storage system into this chest. Make sense? So let's get it, export, and I'll show the recipes for both of these in a, in a minute. Uh, export bus. So we're going to take this export bus, boom, and uh, we need to grab a cable, boom. There we go. So all the cables are tied together. Basically, this the, the buses, they just need to touch either a cable or one of the devices, right? So, like, I also could... Here, let's do it like this. I can put I can put the chest here. Um, need to die it again. Boom. There we go. And the export bus, precision export bus. There. See, that works too. No cable involved, just the bus, and we touched it onto there. Uh, it just all has to be interconnected as one big network. And uh, so now we need to teach this thing to export. 
Oh, darn it. No, seeds. Essence. Seeds. Right there. And we're going to teach it. So again, just like the precision import bus, the precision export bus can export numerous things. And we just taught it how to export essence seeds. We're going to sw switch it to stack mode so we can do a bunch of them. And uh, so now anytime essence seeds go into our ME system, I'm going to just demonstrate this by grabbing a couple of stacks. And we're going to just put these right into, into here. Boom. So now we can see it loading them all up. So now they automatically went from the storage system into this chest, which means this transfer node is already extracting them. It's pulling them out and we could, you know, do upgrades here to make it go faster if we wanted. And that is inserting them into here and you can see them disappearing, which means they're getting planted all around all the monsters. And it looks like it's over here. See him planting going, going down the row. There we go. And now it got to the end. So now it's back here again. And now it's going to do this row. The reason that there's gaps is because it's planting faster than the transfer node is putting them in. That's what that's about. And now it's over here checking here, but there's no available spots for it to plant. So it's eventually going to get past it and then start planting on, on this row. So you get the basic idea. And that's it. So let's let's take this. This is now complete. Uh, and let me run through the well. Let me show you the recipe for the uh, the buses, and then I'll run through the whole cycle again, start to finish. So uh, wait a minute, uh, monsters. Let me go over here. <laughs> uh, okay, back into here. Export bus right here. So the precision export bus. You should already know how to make the basic processors if you've watched the previous videos. So a basic and the basic processor together makes it a precision. Oh, no, Zambi, stop. Fine, creative mode then. Be that way, you jerk. I could have just made it daytime. I am such a nutcake. Why are you even watching these videos? I'm so dumb. Oh my gosh, for real. And why'd you have to two-shot me, you jerk? Ah, I'm in creative now. Get burnt! You like that sunlight, don't you, jerk? Get. Just burn already. That's what I thought. All right, let's get our stuff back. Oh, oh there we go. And I love those. Give me the armor and all the things. Okay. As I was saying, oh wait, no, I was already there. All right. Export bus. Uh, the, here's the basic export bus. And you know, you should be good at any eye by now. I shouldn't have to tell you how to do all this. You just click on it. See the, the stuff we've already made cable before, uh, the interface, you start with the conversion matrix, fluix dust, quartz, iron, craft that together, that gets the matrix, and you add that with iron, glass, and the cable to get the interface. Interface, piston, iron, cable, gets you the basic export bus, and then you add that together with the basic processor to get the precision. Ugh. It's a mouthful, but it's really not that expensive. And very similar recipe with the import bus. Uh, the only difference between them is that you need a sticky piston instead of basic piston and that's it so that's your import export bus and so let's walk through this one final time start to finish so uh we have the harvester here with an upgrade you can see there's some sludge now and it's receiving power from the transceiver below it harvests all this automatically and uh the seeds and the essence gets put into this ender chest and from the ender chest it all gets automatically imported into the ae system then the AE system takes the seeds and puts them into this chest. And that chest is connected to this chest. This transfer node takes the seeds, puts them in the planter. The planter has power because of the transceiver. And then the planter goes and plants them all. Then you just wait and eventually they mature. And then, uh, then they get 
harvest it again with the harvester and and it repeats and that's it just like that he says after half an hour we have completed another challenge automate a farm with a harvester and a planter yes Congrats. Now, uh, there are other fun things you can do with these farms and if, uh, for more traditional crops, uh, there's ways to speed up the process. It's different with magical crops, so that's why I'm not covering it right now. I will, in a future video, I will show you a way to get uh, faster growth out of traditional crops like trees and wheat and that sort of thing. But we'll save that for another day. Thank you for watching. I hope this was useful. If you liked it at all, hit the like button down below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Check me out on my live streams on Twitch, twitch.tv slash bacon underscore donut. And I'm active over on the Twitters too. Give me a follow there. Show me pictures of what farms you come up with in your world. I would love to see them. Thank you guys and I'll see you next time. Bye!